In this tutorial, we'll be demonstrating the basics for doing clear castings with SuperSAP CCR Epoxy. The parts you'll be needing today is your plastic mold, the object that you would like to embed in your casting, mixing cup with volume labels for ease of measuring, standard safety equipment for working with epoxies, gloves, and safety glasses, and of course, your epoxy resin. First, we're going to start by measuring out and mixing our epoxies. All of our epoxies are two-part resins, which means an epoxy part and a hardener part must be mixed at the proper ratio. When doing small batches, it is often easier to measure by volume. And for ease of use, all of our retail systems are a 2 to 1 mix ratio by volume. Once you've properly measured out your two parts, be sure to mix them thoroughly, scraping the sides of your cups. When mixed thoroughly, you will introduce air bubbles into your resin, which for thin coatings should naturally be released. But for thicker coatings, you're going to want to actively decast your resin. One simple way of doing that is placing your resin on a vibration table. Here, we'll be using a vacuum pump to slightly shake the container to help the bubbles release from the mixture. Another method is to use a commercial degassing system. This is a system that we made using a bell jar, a rotary vane pump, and some vacuum tubing. Once again, we want to make sure that our resin is properly mixed. The air that we introduce will be removed in our degassing chamber. When degassing resin by this method, always be sure to use a container that is much larger than the amount of resin you wish to degas. Under vacuum, the air in the resin will expand, causing the resin to foam. This is why you want to always use a container that's much larger than the amount of resin you are trying to degas. Once all the bubbles have risen to the top and popped, remove the vacuum from your degassing chamber and remove the resin. The result should be bubble-free epoxy ready for your casting. When pouring resin into the mold, be sure to pour it slowly so you do not reintroduce air into your casting and when finished, cover the mold to prevent any dust or dirt from contaminating your casting. It's helpful to know the ambient temperature that you're curing your resin in, and you should avoid working in temperatures less than 60 degrees Fahrenheit. At regular room temperatures, your resin should start to gel within 24 hours. It won't be fully hard, but it should be firm enough to support your embedded object. For the next layer, we're going to repeat the same steps as before. First, we're going to properly measure out our hardener and our epoxy. Make sure the two parts are thoroughly mixed. And degas the mixture by vibrating the cup. Once the resin has been properly degassed, you can place the object you wish to embed into your casting. There are several steps to make sure this is done properly. First, 
thoroughly wet the object you wish to embed with epoxy. Next, deposit a thin layer of epoxy over the previous layer. Now, carefully place your object, being sure not to trap any air bubbles between the object and the previous layer. Last, pour the remaining epoxy in this layer, cover your mold, and give it 24 hours to cure. To add a decorative effect to our castings, we are going to tint our final layer with color. This can be done using pigments that are compatible with liquid resins such as polyesters. Because it only takes a small amount of pigment to color your resin, it is sometimes smart to mix tint to the desired color prior to adding it to your master batch. Here, I've taken a small amount of epoxy and mixed red and yellow tint to make an orange color, then added that to my main batch. The resulting color should be the same as my small batch. One of the few drawbacks to using epoxy as opposed to other resins for castings is the long cure cycle. Our casting resins require a 7 day room temperature cure prior to demolding or a 3 day room temperature cure with an 8 hour 100 degree Fahrenheit post cure. Post cures can be done by using a hot box such as the one shown here. They are easy to make using home foam insulation and a space heater. Because space heaters represent a fire hazard, never leave your hot box unattended. Another simpler method is to place your part in the sun over a hot surface such as asphalt and covering it with a black box. Once your part has achieved full cure, Remove it from your mold and enjoy your work. Move me bright.